The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Hi, I'm Deb Ballantyne. I'm your host from The Next Element. What is my purpose in life? Where am I going? Where did I come from? These are all questions that we've asked ourselves in some form or another over the course of our lives, I'm pretty sure. Perhaps we can glean some records for, or glean some answers from our Akashic record. Tina Hintzperker is here from Moonstone Medium, and she's going to enlighten us on what Akashic records are. Welcome, Tina. Thank you. Okay, so first off, very simply, what are Akashic records? Might not be so simple, but... <laughs> So um, just very briefly, uh, Akashic records are the um, vibrational records of everybody. They contain the records of everything you've thought, everything you've said, everything you've done, um, and, and everything um, that is a future possibility as well. So, um, so looking at the past, looking at the future, uh, yeah, the way I like to think of it is um, like a filing cabinet of information for every person. So that's how I look at uh, the Akashic Records. Okay, so that sounds interesting. So how, how are Akashic Records um, accessed? So uh, typically, and I can only speak for myself in terms of how I access them and, and how um, some other people that I know access them, but, um, but typically uh, there's usually a prayer that's said at the beginning uh, in order to open your Akashic records. And then um, when you're done working in the Akashic Records and, and getting information from the Akashic Records, then there's another um, brief prayer that you would say at the very end of that um, in order to close those records so you're not walking around with them wide open. Okay, and so, so, there's, so obviously everybody has sort of their own method of uh, d depending upon the practitioner. Is that, is that there, fair? There may yeah. be other people who, who may do things a little bit differently. I know a lot of um, practitioners who, who will use a prayer of some kind. It may differ, it may look different, but um, a lot of them do use a, a prayer. Okay, so Akashic Records then are very personal. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and what kind of information is available when opening up an, an Akashic Record? So um, when you're opening up Akashic Records, um, you know, because it contains everything at a soul level, so it's, it really is um, everything about you um, in, in this life, in all of your past lives, uh, your soul purpose, um, your overall soul purpose, and it may be a soul purpose over a number of lives or simply in this life, as well as everything in the, in the future. So it's a vast, it's, it's very, very vast. And when you're accessing Akashic Records, you're getting uh, a drop of information. So you're not getting a download of everything about your Akashic Records that would take years. <laughs> probably a little bit overwhelming. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So, so really, it's it really is just to access what you need in that moment. Okay. So, how does an akashic record reading differ from other intuitive readings? Okay. So, I get I get asked this question all the time because people will go to my website and they'll they'll say, well, what's the difference between an intuitive tarot card reading and an akashic record reading and a mediumship reading? And they're they're always asking that. So, I'll start with the mediumship reading. Um, I won't go into too much detail with that, but um, um, but basically, a mediumship reading is a three way connection between um, the sitter, yourself, and their loved ones in spirit, and you're providing them with information to validate who they are, okay. who the loved ones are, and providing that information to the sitter, um, and then providing them with messages. With an intuitive, um, t and I use tarot cards, but you don't have to use tarot cards. You can there's use many. Any, there's many different of ways of. Uh, right? But if you are um, if you are giving an intuitive reading, 
um, then what you are doing is you're reading that person. So the person that's sitting, I, I always say I use the tarot cards as a guide and something pretty for the person to look at while I'm actually reading the, the individual. So it's really just reading what's contained in your aura um, to give you some, some information. And um, with an Akashic re Record reading, the way I look at those is, is that um, because you're, cons you're consulting in order to, getting the download, to get the download of information um, to provide an Akashic Record reading, you're um, just the, the, the information is at a deeper level. It's at a deeper soul level. Um, and um, yeah, there's just something very, very different about um, even even the download of information is really different. Um, when I'm receiving information doing an intuitive tarot card reading, mm -hmm. it feels very different than it feels when I'm doing an Akashic Record reading. Um, and I think the best way to, to to really describe what the download feels like is it, um, for people who may be writers, you know, when you're just writing furiously, all of a sudden you, you, you're writing a chapter in a book and you are just nonstop and you're just getting inspired. Um, and you don't know where that inspiration is coming from, but you don't want to interrupt the flow. Or an artist who is, who is painting and suddenly is, is inspired to, um, you know, do things differently and, and um, splash more color here or more color there. So it feels very much the same way. Um, that download of information, it just feels like it comes from um, somewhere above, somewhere above. And it's, um, and it's a, it's, it's a powerful, it's almost like a powerful um, rain coming down. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell me, Tina, who are the masters, the teachers, and the loved ones? Okay, so um, so in the hierarchy of um, with Akashic Records, so you have the um, the masters and teachers and loved ones are really the ones that I would be communicating with when I'm going into someone's Akashic Records. Um, and the way they come through, I cannot distinguish whether it, I'm talking to a master or a teacher or a loved one or a combination because it really just comes through as um, powerful energy, um, powerful light. Um, but masters um, are um, spiritual beings. They've never been incarnate. They've never walked this earth. Um, and um, masters are really there to guide you. They, they're there from pretty much from the inception of your soul journey. So I'm not talking about necessarily this life. I'm talking about going way back to your first life and your first, um, your first soul. Right, so the masters have been with you all of this way, mm -hmm. and they're there to guide you on your journey to fulfill your soul purpose. Uh, teachers may have once walked this earth; they may not have, um, but teachers are there to teach you something specific. So, once you've um, received the lesson, you've been able to incorporate the lesson and understand, and um, and are able to move forward then that, that teacher um, is, will leave and move on to somebody else. Um, but there will always be some teachers um, who will be available to you. Um, and then your loved ones are your loved ones who once were here um, in this lifetime, um, who are um, now with you in spirit and supporting and guiding you as well. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay. And can anyone access Akashic Records? Absolutely. Absolutely. There are um, many books, many courses out there on accessing your own Akashic Records. So you can absolutely, anybody can learn to do that. You don't need to um, have um, um, any uh, psychic ability before you get started. So it doesn't, you know, it, um, this is this is absolutely for anybody who would be interested in their Kashuk records. Now it's interesting for myself if I'm um, when I'm accessing someone else's records, I just as I'm getting that download, I'm just it's it's like uh, verbally just lots of 
talking, lots of dialogue ends up coming through. When I'm accessing my own records, it doesn't come through that same way. So I have to sit there with a pen and a paper and literally write. So it's almost like doing automatic writing. So I get the download and my, um, my pen takes over for me. Uh, you know, and some people will just be able to sit with it and just receive it that way. Okay. Um, but that I've just found that's that's my process if I'm accessing my own records. Okay, and just for our viewers, what is automatic writing? So automatic writing would be um, where you're really just um, um, uh, um, almost like it's a meditative state that you put yourself in in order to um, receive information. As you're receiving information, you automatically start writing and um, you're not consciously it's you're not consciously writing. You're, you don't um, you're not consciously thinking about every word that's that's um, being put on the paper. Okay. It just it just flows. Okay, so it's not necessarily my thoughts, it's sort of what is being Downloaded. Downloaded. To use your term. Yes. Yeah, that's a great yes. term to use. Yes. Okay. Okay. And so you, you know, you know, we talked about you know the difference between um, other types of intuitive readings and akashic record, uh, akashic record reading. Mm -hmm. So, like, what is the benefit of accessing akashic records? Like, it's, you know, I mean. A lot of people will go to um, you know a psychic or an intuitive and ask them, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, you know, am I going to fall in love? Who am I going to marry? Mm -hmm. um, when we're talking about akashic records, what what what's sort of the thrust of it? I guess is is my okay. question. So, um, and and I get this question all the time. You know, which should I? What what kind of reading should I have? Should I have an intuitive reading? Should I have an akashic record reading? And what I would say is that if there is um, an issue that you're struggling with, um, then uh, absolutely. If you have some questions about why am I um, constantly um, experiencing these same issues over and over again, you know, why are why do I have this pattern of things happening? Um, or even if it's just I, I'm I'm struggling with this issue right now and I cannot figure out what to do or where to go or um, um, how to address it. Um, so it could be a single issue, it could be a pattern of things that are happening. Um, it, it could just be that, you know what, I'm, I, I'm not happy with where I am right now and I, I want to know is there something more out there for me? Is there something more that I should be doing? Is there something that I should be seeking? Um, so when you have those types of questions, then an Akashic Record reading can be really helpful. Okay, so it goes, it, it's, it almost goes deeper. It's yes. a, a deeper soul level almost. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so we talked about the benefits of uh, accessing Akashic Records. Mm. Um, obviously, there are personal Akashic Records. Yes. Um, so, oh, sorry, I am completely <laughs> okay. Sorry, we're uh, stay tuned, and we'll be right back to journey down our soul's path with Tina to talk more about Akashic Records. Don't go away. to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Calling all journalism students. Omni Television is once again awarding scholarships to qualified students pursuing a career in third language journalism. I think all journalism students and aspiring journalists should take the time to learn more about third language and ethnic journalism. And I think the Omni Scholarship is a great way to raise awareness on that. Omni is home to a variety of local
locally produced current affairs programs and daily national newscasts broadcast in six languages. To learn more about Omni Scholarships, visit omnitv.ca slash scholarships. The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Welcome back to The Next Element. I'm Deb Valentine. I'm here with Tina from Moonstone Medium, and we're talking about Akashic Records. <laughs> Welcome back, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, Tina, so how were the Akashic Records discovered, sort of like the history of it? So it's, it's interesting. So uh, I believe that the um, term was actually um, coined by... Um, someone who had founded a group um, in New York City um, was a Theo, um, well, I'm gonna draw a blank on the, on the, the name of the society now, um, back in uh, the late 1800s, 1875 approximately. Um, and so she had, she had coined the phrase um, from the term akasa, which um, is a Sanskrit word for air, um, and um, however, if you look at um, ancient cultures, um, Tibetans, um, um, Buddhists, um, Christians, uh, there's so many cultures which actually make reference to what we would know as the Akashic records. Um, even Nostradamus has been credited as as um, um, having access the Akashic records, and um, Edgar Casey as well. So many people are familiar with Edgar Casey's work mm -hmm. um, as the Sleeping Prophet, and and um, he also spoke about um, accessing the Akashic records too. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. Okay, so um, so we were talking a little bit before. Uh, the break we were talking about uh, how the Akashic Records kind of looks at, you know, past lives, uh, your present situation, and even into the future. Mm -hmm. um, so what? So obviously you can access your past lives through the Akashic Records, but what's the benefit of that? So um, it, we had talked about patterns. Right. Um, so that might be one of the benefits. Is is um, um, to determine whether there's something that may have happened and transpired in your past life that may be impacting your current life here. And it doesn't have to be um, um, absolutely literal. It could be simply that there was, um, there was some, some struggle or um, maybe a difficult death or a difficult life. Um, and this is why you, you may be struggling in different ways. It's, mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to mirror your past lives, but, um, um, but it be, can, can be helpful to really know and understand that. Um, having said that, it's really important. So a lot of people um, will um, want Akashic Record readings because they want to know their past lives. Mm -hmm. And while information may come up about past lives, it may not. So it's important for people to understand that, that um, if, if it's important and relevant to know, then that information gets, gets delivered and gets downloaded. If it's not important to know um, for the, the issue that they're bringing forward, then um, there may be no information that comes up about past lives. There might be other information that's coming up. Okay. that they're sharing so so yeah so um, so while it, it can come up and it often does it doesn't it, it's not always the case it's not a guarantee that you're gonna hear absolutely about a past life. Okay. absolutely okay and how does somebody how would someone prepare to go into to, for an Akashic reading so um, so because um, I'm needing to ask very specific questions uh, of the masters teachers and loved ones um, for the reading, it's um, they need to. It can't be a general reading. So you know, sometimes with tarot readings, people will say, "Oh, I just want to know what's 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 going to happen for me next week or next month," or you know, um, and um, or or just 
you know, well, like just a will, really yeah. general reading about about what's happening right now. What do I need to know right now? Um, whereas with an Akashic Record reading, it's about specific issues, struggles, um, queries, things that you're you're needing to know. So coming prepared with a couple of you know questions things that you're um, wanting to have answered is really important. The other thing that people don't always realize, so the way I provide Akashic record readings is it's a conversation. So unlike other readings where um, people are sitting quietly and I'm delivering information to you, it's a conversation that's back and forth because I need to understand what's what's happening so it almost feels like um, um, like therapy and counseling and uh, so I, I am a, also my background is social work and and um, 30 years plus um, as a social worker and so um, so this actually felt very um, um, I was really drawn to this process uh, in terms of how I learned how to read Akashic records. And so when the person comes in and they're, they're sitting and they're expressing what the issue is or the problem is or the questions that they have, I'm, I'm listening to them initially and getting information from them and clarifying with them much as a, a counselor or therapist would do with a client who's coming in with an issue or a problem. And then what I am doing is I am consulting with the master's teachers and loved ones to get more information for the client as to in order to provide them with what they need to know in order to help them move forward. So it's very much a, a, a conversation that will happen back and forth. And as I'm getting information, the person may have more questions to ask. And so it's that it's that conversation back and forth between the person and their master's teachers and loved ones. Okay, so explain to me a little bit about the process of you receiving these messages. Um, I, I know with a lot of intuitives and, and spiritual mm -hmm. mediums, um, you know, uh, an apple, they might see an apple and to them an apple would mean school or, or mm -hmm. health or so. Is it, is it, is it that kind of symbolism that comes through? Uh, for for Akashic records from from the masters, teachers, and loved ones, it for most people who are working in the Akashic records, it's it's a knowing. So it's it's different. Um, there might be um, some people who may hear something or may may see something. My my um, primary way of receiving information is always knowing anyway. So it's for me, it's very much just knowing the information and just starting, it, it, it really is just, um, it, it downloads and I start speaking. And it's just a flow. It's an incredible flow of information that I'm just receiving. And um, as I'm receiving it, I'm speaking and saying it. You know, and I'm not really, um, even though you're, you're conscious, it's a, it's a little bit different than um, with a mediumship reading, I, I, you know, you're going in and doing what looks like meditating in order to receive the information. It really is just, you know, eyes open, talking, um, talking to the person um, as you're receiving that information. But the records are open because you open up the records um, before you start having these conversations. Um, and then at the end, when the download is, is finished, they've received all the information they need, then you're closing the records at the end of that process. Okay, and, yeah. and how, how do you prepare to, to uh, do an Akashic reading? So I have a, I have a process that I, 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 I do this with all of my readings, so I always have a process where I'm, um, I'm um, you know, like um, creating sacred space, um, ensuring that I'm grounded, ensure that I'm vibrating as high as I, I possibly can be. You know, so there are ways that people can, can do that. You know, meditation is, is one way. Um, you, know, you know, smudging, saging um, yeah, may be another way. Um, so there's lots of ways that people can do that. Um, and um, just, um, yeah, so that's what I do to prepare before before any any reading. 
Okay. Yeah. So somebody will come to you for a reading, um, and as you sort of, you, you've obviously will will go through the process with them before it actually mm -hmm. starts. So then, can is there? Um, side effects to the reading like can, can people experience things after the reading has been completed and after the Akashic record has been closed so um, what I what I would say is that um, there might be some connections that are not made right at that moment in the reading I, I feel like that's with with any reading though too that sometimes sometimes um, there might be a piece of information that you um, you can't initially take or you're you're not really sure about and then later it it dawns on you what that what that means so that's a possibility most of that that hasn't been my experience with people who've come to me for Akashic Record readings um, Often what it is, is that when people have come to me for an Akashic Record reading, um, they're getting validation of things that they've already, they already know. They already know this at a soul level because, you know, I'm, I'm really talking to, I'm talking to them, right? You know, like I'm uh, through the masters, teachers and, and loved ones because on a soul level, it really is is that person it's just you know we're we're often disconnected by you know um from um some of the information that's contained within our soul right um so um so a lot of times i'm getting validation um or they're getting validation of things that they already know uh and they're experiencing their aha moments as as i'm providing the information so I generally am getting that immediate feedback from them. Yes, this is this is what I thought. This is, you know, this this resonates with me. This is generally um, the feedback that I usually will get from someone. Okay. Yeah. Have, you, have you ever had anybody get angry at a reading? Um, with an Akashic Record reading, no. No. Okay. No, I haven't. No. Because they know that 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 reading is coming to them from their yeah. own deeper soul level okay. yeah okay. yeah and it really is information that's already contained somewhere that yeah it's just sometimes people need to hear it right like you need to hear that information um, but yeah it's um it can be a really profound experience um, and it very much it feels like a therapeutic relationship Okay, so do, do we're talking about sort of a therapeutic relationship? Um, do people want to come back? Like, is it sort of a continuing sort of relationship, or the reading is done and you know the the the, the situation if not necessarily resolved, but we have some answers now? Or do people need to have, say, you know what, I I think I need to come back and do this again for the same for the same um, issue. Yeah. I haven't I haven't experienced that personally. Okay. Um, yeah, so so typically it's um, I think because you're talking about these really big issues, right? That that uh, people don't generally need to come back. Okay. Well, Tina, I want to thank you so much for being on the next element and helping us understand what Akashic records are. And thank you for watching and tuning in. Until next time, light and love. Bye-bye. Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll